Welcome back to Jeff Kanagi Live here at Citizen Television. What an interesting conversation we're having. Former Minister Dalma Sutiano in both President Moyes and President Kibaki's government and former PC Joseph Kaguthi. They're waxing lyrical, they're oozing wisdom. I hope you're listening out there. This is the kind of conversation we should be having. So <laughs> you disagree with my no, Mulo Longo. You, you exaggerated and dramatized. <laughs> 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 because, because this was an election. And even if, if it was rigged, yeah. it was very tactical to me, your technology, the way we are getting mm. from the opposition. Mm. It is not the other one where you get the headline, wewe, kibaki, angaria, usiwe, usimalize, boga. Mulolongo unaonekana. And the announcement comes on a different thing. Yeah. The one, I think, which was... Uh, was extreme, was a Muranga area, ya Mweru. Was it Mweru and, and somebody? Mm. You know, where the, the following Monday, the 12 Kanu chairman of Muranga, they issued a statement that it was not a right election. <laughs> That's Kanu now. And it was being done by government officers mm. on behalf of, of uh, Kanu. Kanu, yeah. So you, you get, you, you can't compare you can't compare. You can only compare Mlolongo with the one for 1958, the most rigged, where, because you can talk good English, you're given five votes. No, let's just say that the Mlolongo was yeah. so badly abused. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the proposal came out of the fact that in most places, the people would decide who is the best leader. They didn't have the votes to cast. Right. And many times they picked the right person. So somebody wanting to use that for elective positions yes. for people who are remunerated in office was subject to abuse to an extent that we don't even need to discuss it. <laughs> but provincial administrators seem to work a lot better than our present IEBC. Uh... I, I can't say it because oh. I was in the... Th in More the, orderly. No, I, I was in Old. the thick of the thing. I did 1974 Kakamega. We did not lose a single petition. I came to Nairobi. I did the 1979. I was in Nairobi. We had a very interesting petition. Mm. Ngoba by Zazuanyaki. Yes. Where they stole the barrel papers. <laughs> and we defended it. <laughs> literally. Until we ended up saying... They stole the ballot papers after we had counted. <laughs> and Justice Pratt agreed, as the, the head of the bench, yes. that it was true. And that is another story. It was true. The, it was very well organized. Remember the counting. We, the counting, we used um, KCB tellers, 100 of them, National Bank tellers, tellers. for counting. Mm. It's not like the, 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 the others where, you know, the counting, you would hide. It was not the, the way you are doing this. You, you heap each cartridge. Right. Then you count like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are counting, then the rigging would take place around there. But the minute you recruit, tell us, how would you, would you bribe these ones and how would they do not know the battle they will be given to, right. to tally? So that, you can't compare. That time, remember it was a government because the supervisor of elections was uh, in the AG chambers. So it was government government. And uh, it was also very tricky because of one law, one, one cassection, that the, the announcement by the returning officer is final unless it's changed it in the courts. Hapo dipo ilikuwa shida. We had one case where somebody read the others, the, the, <laughs> what he wanted, and decided to go away. Then he goes struggling in, a, in, a, in where? In the court. So what but you that say? time, you do it because the chief executive, the president, has a nod. So you are implementing some script. Yeah. And that's why you have seen the, the, the politicians have been guarding themselves so that you don't lose that again. Mm. And uh, it's not lost. Was it, we, we, obviously, you can say we've come a long way. True. Mm? Yeah. 
I mean, you were elected through Mulolongo. Yes. First time in 1988. 88. Mm. We've come a long way. Well, it has been an experience. There was a lot of influence uh, from uh, the headquarters, you know it. Well, <laughs> even now there are still influences. <laughs> there are influences from people who are in power the, in the headquarters. In the country <laughs> yes. uh, who would keep directing uh, these issues mm. because you, you, you want to be able to control parliament, you want to be able to control the administration. Otherwise, you cannot have a situation where there's nobody in power. Mm. Right? And you, that nobody is you responsible. Jeff, mm. Yes. I think you need to tell Jeff. Yes. The Cold War kept us on uh, a threat of uh, government survival. Cold War until 1980. Remember? Right, I remember. And the whole of that government were being overturned. Yeah. yeah. Overturned. So if a head of state did not watch on that and use all the political maneuvers to keep the country going, we did not, you know, have uh, that problem, although there was an attempted coup, isn't it? Yes. And you know, the, the Western countries, the Eastern Bloc, the Western Bloc, they were playing their game here on their interests. So the, when, when I told you, judge the system that happened against the way it was that time, not the way you are not compare. <laughs> no. Now, you make a mistake. And they know. Because you had to get enough right. MPs in the parliament because they can vote you out. Mm. Or you they see, can when we decided to have a maximum of 10 years yeah. for the president, we knew that it is terrible to have a weak leadership. You need a strong presidency who must deliver on an agenda in a defined period. He will not go beyond 10 years. That one we already limited. Yeah. It is terrible for a country to have a weak leadership. Because a weak leadership will not deliver on the results, particularly when the national challenges that we have as Kenya are developmental. They are difficult. They take a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. They will take a lot of resources. They will require a lot of new technology. So you need an effective executive to be able to continue the development path for the republic. And even me, for now, I still need a strong government. Yeah, you I must. need a strong government mm. because it is. Is it strong? It, it, you know, Six months. This, it has you barely can't started. Judge again, just look at uh, Singapore. Yeah. I used to send DCs to Singapore, Malaysia, and India uh, in uh, in mid and early eight, in mm. in eighties, mm. and they used to describe it like a dictatorship. But you require a strong government in order to give resource and a leadership which is uh, very strong, but it has direction. He has not been talking about development. I will not mind a dictator who is development and people-centered, whipping all of us to a, a certain direction. And 10 years he leaves yes. and there is a successor. In a I personally went to Singapore. Mm. I even went to the remote islands just to see how effective government directions are implemented at grassroots level, some kilometers, an island kilometers away. Mm. And it was effective everywhere. Cool. Now, what happens is when you have such an effective leadership, people tend to think of dictatorship. But nobody stops them talking. Nobody stops them making their own contributions. It is just that the kind of jealousy tends to be within the leaders, that now so-and-so is being followed too much, so-and-so is being hard too much. No, it is just his turn for a specific period, for a specific purpose, for an agenda which we all know and we have also approved. That's it. But gentlemen, um, both Lee Kuan Yew, he served for what, about 40 years, right? And you know others on the continent, strong leaders you're talking about, Let's say Paul Kagame. He's been there, what, since 1996, let's say, which is uh, 20... Is Rwanda working? Well... Emphatically, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Emphatically, yes. Now, even security. Just look at Museven here. Can you say that he has not controlled the country? I say emphatically, yes. Because we have uh, this problem we're having now in, uh, in Northwestern Kenya. 
he had the same problem the other side. Yes. He decided That's to right. make an announcement very clear that anybody who is armed is an armed force and will be dealt with by armed forces. Give system of withdrawing the guns. Karmojang is settled. Yeah. Look at the way we are, we are suffering here. I went to Rwanda myself. The Kagame leadership philosophy is for the people, yeah. not for himself. Yeah. He wants to be sure that he can make the people of Rwanda work for themselves yeah. with the support of the government. And it is working. You see, it is different from somebody who is holding a position for his own personal prestige or reputation. Right. No, that one is for my people. And when he takes you through where he took Rwanda, they took me to the skulls mm. to see the bodies yes. that had been killed before. Any weak administration could never have moved Rwanda because people had killed each other so much that in a country like this, the Luyas have killed so many, the Luos have killed so many, the Kikuyus have killed so many. Who will unite them? Mm. So you, they needed a Kagame, and they're struggling even now to be able to develop a replacement leadership after he goes. He's working on it. So he's genuine. Rwanda is small. We can do these things. We are behind. We know what we need to do for the future of our country. Can we get in that direction? And they are managing. And if you, you arrive in, in uh, Kigali, traffic alone, traffic with uh, there is a jam there. Then you get this officer moving towards that direction. You say that you are hunger. You are done like this. Correct. And guess what? Border borders stop at uh, traffic lights. Yeah. Border borders, yeah. and they, they are there all they are taking they are taking order. care of, their, of their citizens. Each one of them has a mask. Look at the grave when you go to any police station. You look at the motorcycles. Look at the hospitals. We have to get words for for for, for those people because of the indiscipline. So we that's why when I and, and I, I, I I was working with him, he knew that uh, I believed in a strong government. Strong administration because it delivers. Absolutely. Yes. It delivers. Gentlemen, let's go to the magic wall. Lots of reactions from today's interview. Lots and lots of reactions. Let's take a look at the tweets coming in very thick and very fast. Collins Games says The opposition should be very clear on the objectives to be achieved by the demonstrations. There are those who are suspicious that this is just a pathway to another handshake. Yeah. Did you say yeah? yeah they have said it. Is it a pathway to a handshake? Mm, I have not uh, as yet detected that, but discussing it, we will see. That's why I'm saying. I'll tell you, not the good. handshake the yeah. way we know handshake. Right. Because the handshake we know now is for the benefit of an individual. But what is happening now will draw attention to common issues that need to be addressed, not to benefit individuals at the end of it, Everybody. but the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. All right. Kimani AMV says, thanks, Jeff, for bringing these wise men to talk to us. Indeed, you're we, most welcome. We, we salute him. <laughs> if he's a, he's a, we have very few people, yes. I thought for a long time, who have a word to thank you for the good da work done yeah. by public officers. I would like to encourage, appreciate those officers yeah. who are on the ground so that they deliver and they serve you well. Absolutely. Good point. Kiplimo Timothy says, these elders have a perfect blueprint of how to find solutions to what is ailing our country. It is time leaders in top echelon of our society involve elders in decision making and problem solving. Chest thumping and finger pointing is detrimental to all. So, totally agreed. Mm. Molero Schofield says, these are real fountains of knowledge. Former Minister Dalmas and PC Kaguthi offering advice as should be. Thank you for wonderful guests today. Thank you, Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm going to have a couple of minutes for us to wind up. I'll start with you, but a PC. Going forward, a lot of people listening, watching you tonight. And Kenya, I mean, with, with, 
you know, we're at a crossroads here. Now we're hearing there's going to be two manda manos a week. Where do we go from here? Listen to one another and allow the clergy go to the back room and uh, engage this side, engage the, this side, chat of diplomacy until they all come together. Because they are talking to each other, huko. So get somebody who will say, are you listening to what they are saying? What are you decoding they are saying? And are you listening to what they are, they, are, they are saying? What are they saying? What is the solution you are seeing? That's what we require now. And we have it. Unfortunately, I must blame the clergy to a certain extent. Because some of them will end too quick. We give a couple of people, we give a bond, we talk to the area. To the extent that uh, the pupils became like uh, the platforms for for politics, that, that I have not, I, have not I, I feel uncomfortable. Too much of uh, politics uh, with, um, you know, you get the politician, there's a, a cross there, there is a, the, the people in pink here, then there's a politician here who is talking, uh, and that's the ship. That thing has, uh, does not go well with me because the prayer that somebody uh, asked, you do not know this ship, who are on this side and who are on this side. Let's reduce that. Let the government go talk to, the, to its people at the right forums. And please, this is a shrine. And I have had, I have had uh, followers, congregations, say, you know, we, we are helpless. Because they allow them, and we feel helpless. Some have stopped going. And we do not want people to move away from the churches, the shrines because of the kind of uh, things which are happening. I would like the politicians to please kindly remove yourselves slowly away from creating that platform because the congregation is having their different political camps. Mm, absolutely. Waziri, you get the last word. Uh, I would say that we have to give national unity very serious consideration we must insist that we retain Kenya as Kenya for all Kenyans. Uh, there is developing an orientation which you can see from the many political parties who will end up being followed by small ethnic blocks. 83 parties or more. What are they going to do? <coughs> Each of them has small following from the areas that they come from. As a republic, we actually don't need more than three parties. So that in terms of policy, if you have two extremes, you have a liberal uh, team in the middle. So the earlier the political leadership considers the promotion of ethnic blocks as political basis, the better. The earlier they stop that, so that you only don't bring the parties at election time. You have some ideas, otherwise you would not have formed a political party. He has some ideas, otherwise you would not have formed the political party. Before we go to the next elections, these parties should group themselves on a policy basis, on a development agenda, on a service delivery agenda for the republic. Once they do that, you will find we don't even need more than four. Best, I would say three. It will be so important for Kenya that the larger tribes do not continue the temptation to lead on the basis of the tribe, because the tribe has a huge uh, uh, vote block. Politically, that temptation would be strong. Uh, but our agenda is not politics anymore. Our agenda, the primary agenda, is now development and service delivery. For that one, you don't need to benefit from the ethnic block you come from. True, many of them vote for you. Why? Because they don't know about the others. Yeah. The way public affairs were being managed in the Republic, you will find that Turkana doesn't even know where uh, Lunga Lunga is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
that exposure is not there. Yet as a country, you know, Jeff, we are leading in education. We have some of the most educated youth in the region. In fact, you can even say comparable to much of Africa. It is time to use this talent, which we have taken through schools, into production. To do so, we'll need quite a bit of capital. We need quite a bit of unity. We need quite a bit of advanced systems that would be able to lead to results in our republic. Yeah. That way, we would develop a Kenya we are all proud of. And think of it, the day we get to Federation of East Africa, the bigger region, mm. what would the individual ethnic blocks do? Mm. They will be too small to be anything. <laughs> so we better start planning. Good luck, already the world recognized Kenya as the regional hub. Mm. If you want to approach East and Central Africa, you start here, right? Absolutely. Now, we have to use that acknowledgement to attract more capital. We can only do it if we develop efficient systems mm. throughout the country. If we stop all these confrontational politics that would bring chaos in the, in the, in, in the administration of our affairs in this republic. Yeah. That is what I would be looking at myself. We have a long way to go, gentlemen. Nationhood. Nationhood. We've got to get, that's why that Article 4 of the BBI, mm. how I wish that uh, the, the three amendments, the president who like uh, constitutional amendments, we included that. Nationhood building. Kenya is Tahili Heshima. Mm. More than that now. If you just look at the constitutions of the regions, I wish I came with my presentation that that there is that chapter. Yeah. It will not allow a lot of uh, these things which are doing. And then we end up with meritocracy other than Idiot. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and we have to keep talking. We'll have you back more and more because everyone says this wise night, words. This night. Yes. It's, it's okay. It's for the nation. We're serving the nation. <laughs> I have to change. Start to change it. <laughs> Stop retiring. Okay. 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 <laughs> Dalma Sotieno and Joseph Kagudi, gentlemen, who are wise beyond their years. And if you're listening, you'll get a couple of nuggets from what they just said. Help move this country forward. That's what we need, folks. I keep saying, let's keep talking, because the moment we stop talking, it's the moment we start fighting. We don't want to go down that slippery slope. Thanks so much for being a part of Jeff Kananga Lab again. We are uh, celebrating the month of Ramadan. So to all our Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, Ramadan Karim to you all. In the meantime, Jeff Kananga Live is powered by APA Insurance, where life can be unpredictable. Accidents can happen or unexpected illnesses can leave you with financial burdens. But with APA Insurance, you can protect what matters most to you, whether it's your health, your car, your home. APA Insurance has you covered. Don't let unforeseen circumstances bring you down. Ensure your happiness today with APA Insurance. Chef Kranik Live, also powered by Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker's Black Label Whiskey has a bold taste with bold flavor meant for those who take bold steps. Johnny Walker is the world's number one blended scotch whiskey, aged 12 years to perfection with notes of sweet, smoky, and spicy. Keep walking means to take a bold step and inspire others to take bold steps. Remember to drink better, not more. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Don't drink and drive. Excessive consumption of alcohol can be harmful to your health. Thanks so much for being a part of this show, folks. Good night, good luck. God bless Kenya. Thank you, gentlemen. Good job. <laughs>